the pulp and paper industry have a long financial financial impact on the Swedish on the economy of Sweden. It is in fact the world's third largest export of pulp, paper, and so on timber. And also the in, the interest for the forest is increasing nowadays due to the fact that it's bio-based, it is sustainable, and also traditionally the products from the pulp and paper industry have been paper, but nowadays we can see a new palette of new products. Uh, it can be biofuel, it can be nanocellulose, it can be products from the, from the bark, for instance. My work is more related to the, to the more traditional pulp and paper making. These slides show some examples of the products. To the left, we have an example of a, a, a packaging paper, a corrugated board. And to the upper right, we have a example such as uh, a luxury packaging and also a tissue grade downstairs. These are the qualities that are foreseen to increase in the future, while some other grades like newsprint, newsprints, copy paper are expected to, uh, to decline. Now we have uh, been talking about the product, but how is the pro product obtained? Well, this is a very schematic uh, overview. You have the trees in the forest, and you chop them down, and you transport them to the pulp mill. In the pulp mill, you liberate the, the fibers within the wood, and you can have uh, mechanical pulping as well as chemical pulping. In my work, I have used chemical pulps from the craft process. Uh, the pulps can be white brownish, that is unbleached, or they can be more or less white uh, after bleaching. And then when you have the liberated fiber, it goes to the paper mill, where you have the paper machine that produce uh, the paper. And my work has focused within the step just before entering the paper machine, the so-called stock preparation. And what you do in the paper machine, uh, to make it very oversimplified, uh, you, take, you have the pulp, you add a lot of water, and then you have the paper machine to remove all the water that you just added. But don't believe me, really, it's a more complicated process than that. But as a very, very oversimplified view, that is one way to see it. If we go a bit more into detail, we have the pulp mill that liberates the fibers, and the fibers goes to the stock prep. And in the stock prep, you have uh, different activities going on. For instance, you have disintegration of the pulp. Depending on whether uh, the pulp com comes directly from a pulp mill, you have a certain pulp consistency, or if it's market pulp that is dried, you need to uh, disintegrate the pulp to a desired consistency. And when you do that, it is important that you have control of the pH value and the conductivity of the fiber suspension. And then come the main uh, unit operation in the stock preparation, that is the refining process. Uh, in the refining, you kind of prepare the fiber for the paper machine and also makes it, you just, you. You don't only refine to get strengths, you only refine to get the fibers ready for the wet end chemistry uh, that is in the, in the paper machine, because it's a quite complicated process when you, when you are forming a high quality paper. Uh, I like this, uh, this uh, picture a lot. Why do we have refining? Well, refining is a mechanical treatment uh, of the pulp fiber. It's a way to make the fiber more flexible and conformable so that they can bind together and give mechanical strength to the paper. And what are the effects of the refining on the fiber? This is a very common um, photo or graph that is was presented by Page already in 1989. And these, you can see the effect on, on a fiber level. When you have 
when you put in mechanical energy, the fiber can be either more straighter or curlier. It depends on the circumstances. Also, you can have a, a rupture or an uh, influence on the fiber wall structure and cause internal fibrillation, which, which makes the material swell. When the fibers are rubbed together, you can have external fibrillation, and that is when part of the fibrils are attached to the fiber surface and parts are loose. And when the material are completely loose from the fiber, it calls fines. And then also you can have some fiber material, uh, some material in the fiber that dissolves and comes out as colloidal material. And also during refining, you can have fiber length reduction. And if it's too much, you, use, you can say that it's called fiber cutting. So this slide are just an example of some real fibers. And as you can see, it is not a homogeneous uh, material. Uh, it can have different wood components. It can have different uh, defects, dislocalization, and it also have different shapes. The fiber lengths are different. So it is important that we remember that this material is not a homogeneous material. It contains of distributions. To the left, we have a soft wood fiber, and to the right, a hard wood fiber. So how is the structure of the fiber? Well, to simplify it, you can say that the fiber is, is uh, structured in different layers and the main wood component polymers are lignin, cellulose and hemicelluloses. And uh, uh, in this case, it's a soft wood and you have xylen and glucomannan. And you see the red arrow indicating at the carboxylic acid group. That is something that we are going to focus on today. Because when you have carboxylic acid groups, uh, they can be dissociated or not, uh, or not dissociated, depending on the chemical environment. And if you have them dissociated, you can have an electrostatic repulsions that expand the, the, and swell the fibers. As I mentioned before, paper is produced in water. Water is very essential for how the, how the fibers behave. And the water can be in different places. It can be surface water. It can be water in the, in the, in the pores, in the fiber wall. And um, this, slide, um, this here shows uh, uh, wood polymer and how it interacts with the water molecules. And you have the carboxylic acid group here. And depending on the chemical sur surrounding, it can be ionized or not. And then you have a counter ion to consider. It can be sodium, it can be calcium, or it can be uh, more or less any uh, cations. So what factors affect the swelling? And what do we know about counter ions and swelling? Well, Scallon and Grignon, already in 19, uh, 19, 1979, showed this list about increased swellability. You can see that the highest swellability is obtained for uh, sodium, and then lithium and calcium, and then it goes down. So if you have the sa same material, and just have different counter ions in the material, you can you affect the swelling of the fiber material. And this is also shown by Batton and Salmian, uh, where you have on the y-axis, you have the water content uh, in the fiber against relative humidity. And if you have high, at high relative humidity, you can see that when the fibers are in uh, lithium or sodium form, they contain more water. Which is, which is consistent with what uh, Scallon and Grignan also uh, saw. So clearly the counter ions affect the swelling, but it's also important for the mechanical strength of the paper. In this slide, we have the, uh, 
you can say mechanical strength on the y-axis, and then you have the swelling degree on the x-axis. And then you, the dots are uh, pulps having different counter ions. And as you can see, when the pulps are in sodium form, they have the highest mechanical strength compared, for instance, if you have it in the proton form, that is when the carboxylic acids are not, uh, are not dissociated. So clearly, these counter ions uh, have a large impact on the mechanical strength of the produced paper. Okay, so let's be a bit more practical now. We're talking about refiners, and I wanted to show you how refiners can look like. Uh, they are both on laboratory scale, you have them in industrial scale, and they can vary in size also. And um, here we have a small PFI mill or PFI refiner, uh, which is one of the most commonly used refiner methods. It's very gentle, and you have a quite high pulp consistency. It's about 10% when you do the refining. Here you have two industrial refiners. Uh, it's a conical refiner and a plate refiner. And you, per, you do the refining uh, in these two at a lower, lower pulp consistency. It could be about 2 to 5%. And the important thing when you talk about refiner is how the fillings, the segments look, because they are the ones that really treat the fibers and, and affect the paper property. But it's also a combination of what do you want to achieve with refining? What, how do you want to affect the fibers with refining? But on the other hand, you need to also have productivity. It, it cannot clog together. So there, everything is a balance. In my work, I will talk about, a lot about refining efficiency. And when I, when I do that, I'm thinking of these two graphs. You have the water retention value, WRV, which is a measure on, on how much uh, the material has been swollen, and it's a centrifugal method. Uh, and then on the x-axis, you have the refining energy input. That is how much energy is put into the fiber material. So it's swelling against energy input. And then you have tensile index, which is um, uh, measure of mechanical strength against specific refining energy input. So, so these are uh, two graphs to have in mind. The aim of my thesis is to connect the swelling and the initial swelling of fibers in how it and, and its effects in the refining by using uh, and considering the polyelectrolytic nature of the material uh, in and especially with emphasis on the chemical environment. And the parameter that I've studied in order to do that is the counter ions to the charge group, the number of charge group, the pH and electrolyte concentration of the fiber suspension. And then I have considered it and, and see how it has, uh, how it affected the external fibrillation and also the rheology and flocculations as well as we did a, a study on the importance of refining homogeneity, because as you saw on the sl previous slides, it's quite an inhomogeneous material and, uh, that we have. Before I go into uh, results, I would like to show you uh, some uh, a general experimental layout. So let's start with the pulp. The pulp can contain different metals, depending where it has grown, but also depending on uh, its prehistory. Uh, pre so what we first do when we have uh, pulp, we try to put it on the same level, and we do that, do that by ion exchange the pulp into a proton form. And in principle, that's an acid wash, so you kind of wash out all the metals that are there, and then you have a common starting point for the material. Then you can divide the pulp material into three different, if, if you want to do that. For, and then you can ion exchange one part to sodium form, another part to calcium form. And then if you want to keep one part uh, in proton form as well. So then we have three different pulps that are the same, but have different counter ions. 
that are important to remember. It's the same materials, but you have different counter ions. And then you do the refining. So you refine the materials, and after the refining, you can choose to divide it. You can, for instance, keep the pulp that are in the sodium form and keep it in, in sodium form and do sheet forming, or you can, after refining, convert the refined pulp samples to calcium form and do sheet forming. And when it comes to refining in calcium, you can keep it in calcium and do sheet forming. And um, I would also like to mention that uh, the normal industrial pulp are in calcium form. That's the, that's the kind of uh, most common, um, although it's not pure, it's affected by the surrounding, of course. So then you, if you have the calcium, you continue and do the sheet forming in calcium. And if you have the proton form, you can keep the, the pulp in proton form and do sheet forming, or you can ion exchange the pulp to calcium and do sheet forming. By having this experimental setup, we are able to, to evaluate the sole effect of refining. So let's start by looking to the parameters that we have studied. The first one is counter ions to the charge group. And in this slide, you see an uh, unbleached softwood pulp. And on the y-axis, we have the water retention value, which is a swelling measurement. And then on the x-axis, we have the specific uh, refining energy input. And uh, these are the way the swelling, how different pulp has developed. So let's start here at the lowest curve. In this case, you have uh, performed the refining in the proton form, uh, and also the water retention value was determined in water form, um, in proton form, sorry. And then uh, you converted the refined pump sample to calcium, and then the swelling increased. And then uh, the this one you see here, which is uh, black boxes, uh, that's refining in calcium form, which is a way a reference form you could call. And then if we go to the highest level, that is when you perform your refining in sodium form and also your water retention, water retention measurement in sodium form. And if you convert the pulp afterwards to calcium form, the, the water retention value goes down. But it's important to remember that even though we converted it to the same ionic form, there's still a beneficial uh, improvement in refining efficiency. So for instance, let's just go into 117, the water retention value. It requires maybe 50 kilowatt hour per ton when you compare it uh, in calcium level at the water retention value and compare it with, with the, the reference case, which can be calcium level, is about 100. So there's a huge potential to save energy if you can have control of what ionic form your pulp are in. This one shows also an unbleached uh, softwood pulp, and it's the, the mechanical strength, the tensile index against specific refining energy. Uh, and in this case, we have after refining, converted all the pulps to calcium form and did the hand sheet preparation and the testing. And as you can see, the refining in sodium form has the highest tensile index. It has a faster development compared to the other uh, ionic form. Maybe if you want to have a tensile index of maybe 95, you can see that it requires 50. And if you have uh, calcium, it's about to double. So in that sense, uh, just by changing the counter ions into sodium, you can improve your refining efficiency. So I would like to conclude that the counter ions are important and it increases the swelling and uh, you have a possibility to, to uh, improve the refining. The next parameter is the number of charge. Uh, depending on what pulp you have, depending on whether it's bleach or unbleached, it, can, it contains different amount of charge group. Uh, and then also usually it contains a different fiber dimension. So in this case, we wanted to have the same fiber, but we wanted to introduce charges. So we, we do not have any effect on, on the origin or on the fiber dimensions. So uh, in this slide, you can see the water retention value 
against PFI number of revolution, and that corresponds to refining energy input. And we have the reference pulp, and then we have one pulp there where we have introduced uh, charges and yet an extremely high level of introduced charges. And uh, in, as you can see, uh, we have an increase in water retention value due to refining, and the same goes for the, the, the lower level of, uh, of uh, um, where we have introduced car, um, charges. And then at the, high, at the extremely high level, we have an extreme development of the water retention value. In fact, I've never seen such high levels, to be, to be honest. Uh, so this was really interesting that you could see such a clear effect on the swelling. But what about the mechanical properties? Well, in this case, you have the tensile index, and then you have the water retention value without fines. That means that we have removed the fines, the fine material that was loose, as I mentioned before. So it's just the fiber. And if we look at the, at the reference, uh, you have a, a certain tensile index. And when you have this highly charged pulp, it's almost a double. So clearly, the, the, the introduction of charges affected the mechanical strength. And for the, for the uh, very lightly or unrefined case, it is positive, but then you don't see the, the development in strength that we first thought that we could see. We got swelling, yes, but we did not see an improved tensile index. And when we looked at the fiber, we could understand why. Uh, to the upper left, you have the reference pulp that is unrefined, it's a bit curly, uh, it's a, bit, it's a bit curly and typical pulp fibers, I would say. And down here, we have the highly charged pulp. It's unrefined. And now you can see the fibers are much more straight. And this is due to the fact that you have these um, charges that, uh, that uh, interact um, and do electrostatic repulsion. This is, has also seen, been seen by other researchers that, that uh, uh, introduction of charges uh, increase the straightness of the fibers. And then when you do the refining of the reference pulp, you see some external fibrillation, and in this case, the fiber gets straighter. And when you do uh, refining of the highly charged pulp, you kind of destroy this, the fiber. You have ballooning, you have severe destruction of the fiber. So somewhere, you cannot uh, have two high charges and uh, put in mechanical energy at the same time. So I would say um, that an increased number of charges improve the refining efficiency. But if you have too high, high, if you have a too high number of charges, you destroy the fiber. The alpha structure is destroyed, and you have um, severe damage and really have no strength improvement. So there's a balance. The next parameter that we studied were electrolyte concentration, a pH. In this slide, you have the water retention value against specific energy. And we did the refining in sodium form. And then we determined the water retention value after, refi uh, uh, after refining and converted it to calcium form. And here you can see the impact of the electrolyte concentration. This is a low concentration and this is a high concentration. So just by having different um, ionic strengths of your liquor, you can have an, you have a clear impact on the refining behavior. And this one shows the impact on uh, mechanical strength of uh, the produced paper. So in this case, you have a low electrolyte concentration, and up here you have a high concentration. So you see, if, if, the, if the goal is to achieve a paper of certain strengths, you can, uh, you can reduce the energy input by having a low electrolyte concentration.
The pH value is also, of course, important because it controls how the carboxylic acid are, whether they are dissociated or not. Uh, and in this case, we have a, a refining and we have the water retention value against specific energy input. And we have three different uh, pH value and the refining was done at the, the same electrolyte concentration. And the highest uh, degree of swelling at a specific energy input was obtained when the pulp was, uh, when the pH value was around nine and the lowest one was when it was uh, pH five. And uh, these results are in accordance with the results uh, that Tom Lindstrang amongst other also saw that uh, around nine is the maximum optimum swelling for fibers. So I would say that the more swollen uh, the initial fibers are, the more the refining efficiency is improved. And you can do that by controlling the counter ions to the charge group. You can have such a low electrolyte concentration as possible, which can be limited to some practical reason, of course, and then you should have an optimal pH value. The next thing that we st studied was external fibrillation. We wanted to understand why is refining a sodium more beneficial uh, apart from this electrostatic interaction? Could we see any differences in, 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 in the fiber level? So what we did, we looked into the external fibrillation. External fibrillation, that is when part of the uh, fibrils are attached to the fiber surface and parts are loose. And we used three different techniques to measure the external fibrillation. Uh, an image analysis method called fibrillation index. We also used another uh, light scattering technique called OptiGrill. And also we used a standard phase contrast light microscopy. So in this table, we have the pulps. We have two different ionic form. We have sodium form and we have proton form. And we refine the pulp at different refining energy input and we measure the fibrillation index and the optic grill index. And I would like to show you if we compare the pulp uh, refined in sodium and compare it with the pulp refined in proton form at 50 kilowatt hour per ton, you can see that according to the fibrillation index, the external fibrillation should be less for the pulp in sodium form than in the proton form. If on the other hand, we looked at the optocryl methods, it is the opposite. Then we had more krills on the sodium uh, pulp fibers than we had in the pulp fibers that were in proton form. Um, so we took a look at the fiber and uh, these are pulps refined at 125 kilowatt hour per ton and this one is a pulp refined in the sodium form and then the other one in the proton form. And as you can see, uh, there's a huge difference between them. The fibrils for the pulp or the fiber in the sodium form is quite tiny. The fibrils are small, but you have to remember this is a highly swollen material although, and, and it, they are quite short and tiny. And while it is for the pulp in the proton form, you have like larger chunks that are kind of torn out from the fiber surface. And the fibers in the proton form is kind of not swollen, uh, minimum swollen, I would say, uh, and also more brittle, I would say. So clearly we have a different in the fibril characteristics between refining in sodium and refining in calcium form. And uh, not shown here, but it was the same with the pulp in the calcium form. They also had coarser fibrils that were longer. And of course, if you compare the different techniques, the different method, the image analysis, the image analysis method have easier to detect krills on this pulp compared to, to this pulp, while the, light, scat while the light scattering technique took these small fibrils. So, I would like to conclude that we have different characteristics of the fibrils on the fiber surface when the fibers are refined in sodium form compared to fibers refined in pro 
pro uh, proton form. And this is probably due to the fact that the, the fibers in uh, proton form are more brittle. Uh, and you can feel them when you, when you have them in your hand, I would say. Um, so, and then we did also addis additional studies, which I will not go into detail here, uh, to see whether there were any differences between refining of uh, the pulps in different ionic form on fiber on the rheology, uh, on on uh, flock strength, but we could we couldn't find any major impact of that. So the proposed mechanism for the refining having different ionic form and in particular uh, the improved refining efficiency for the uh, for the pulps that are refined in sodium form is summarized in this slide. If you have, if you do refining when the pulps are totally in proton form and you do your water retention measuring in, in uh, proton form as well, you can say that you just transfer mechanical energy. But if you have your pulp in sodium form and do your measurement of the swelling as the water retention value in proton form, you have both mechanical and electrostatic interaction. And then if you take your pulp and convert it back to proton form and remove all this electrostatic interaction, the water retention value of course goes down. So the difference here is really the assisti assisting of the electrostatic repulsive forces. So, I would say that we should be thankful that we have this <laughs> charge group there because they can really help us uh, in more than one way, I would say. So the conclusions from my work is that fibers in sodium form improves the refining efficiency and you can reduce the energy by up to 50%. Uh, that uh, the electrostatic repulsion assisted refining is really a cooperation between the higher osmotic pressure in the fiber wall uh, and the applied mechanical stress, which gives another fibrillation characteristics, but we could not see any impact on the flock strength or flock size uh, due to that fact. Also, that the amount of charges in the fiber material correlates to the refining efficiency and there's a balance between the number of charges and the ultra-structured fibers. If you have too many charges, you destroy the fibers and just got a swollen material with no strength. So that was my second last slide. This is my last slide. I would like to acknowledge the Swedish Energy Agency for funding a large part of this work. I would also like to thank the Cluster Research Program at SFI Packforest in Vencia Rice with all the industrial participating companies. Thank you very much. Also, Professor Lennart Salmin and Professor Monica Eck for um, helping me to finalize uh, this work. And also, uh, technicist Ulla Bit Molin, who has been a, a colleague for many years and also a great. Um, discussion partner when it comes to refining and she has done tremendous uh, amount of work uh, related to refining and also Professor Myatun who introduced me to the concept uh, elect polyelectrolytics and all my co-authors. So thank you very much. <laughs>